tree mutation is when you take an existing tree and change it, either by changing its root value or its branches. Oftentimes, tree mutation is recursive as well. Here's an example, pruning trees. So when you have an existing tree and you remove subtrees from it, that's called pruning. In general, to write a function that prunes a tree, you want to perform the pruning before you perform recursive processing because then you don't end up processing the pruned trees. It's not always possible to do this. Sometimes you have to look at a subtree before you know whether to prune it or not. But in some cases, you could just tell by looking at the branch directly. So remember this example of computing the Fibonacci sequence using memoization? We went through every recursive call to fib and annotated it by whether it was returned by fib or found in the cache of the memoized function or skipped entirely because it was found in the cache pre-computed. So we actually had to call fib on one and zero, but then subsequent calls to fib one were found in the cache. We actually have to call fib on two and three, but all other repeated calls to fib2 and fib3 are found in the cache, so the next thing that we actually have to call fib4 is on fib4. So we discussed this recursive computation and the effect of memoization. I think we could illustrate that by building a fib tree and then pruning away everything that's either found in the cache or skipped entirely. So given a tree, we can prune any repeated branches by taking the tree and also keeping track of a list of the subtrees we've seen before. Now tree mutation just means reassigning one of the attributes, either the branches or the root. So in this case, I'm going to say that the branches of the pruned tree are all branches of the original tree but we only include the branches that we haven't seen before. Now this removes repeated branches, but it won't remove all the repeated subtrees deeper down into the tree. In order to do that, we need to recursively call prune repeats. So I'll go through all the b in t.branches, which is the updated set of branches where I've pruned away everything I've seen before and I call prune repeats on the branch, passing in the list of what I've seen. Now this code isn't complete because I haven't updated the list of what I've seen. The simplest way to do that is just to append t to scene before I make the recursive calls. So the order of everything is important. First I prune the branches, and then I make my recursive calls. But before I make my recursive calls, I need to update the list of things that I've seen before. Now if I build a fib tree of eight, it looks like that. If I print it out, it has a lot of substructure. But if I prune all the repeats in that tree, starting with an empty list of what I've seen before, and then print it out again, I see a much more compact structure. These don't include any repeated calls. Once I've computed fib8 and fib5, I don't need to recompute them when I create fib13, because I already know what they are. And I got this structure because I had memoized fib tree. If instead I hadn't memoized fib tree, there would be no repeats in here at all.